is stress and anxiety genetic and how to stop passing it on to the next generation. So welcome, uh, Will Perry here. Uh, welcome back to the Keeping the Conversation Alive uh, video. So uh, this one is a big one. Uh, so is stress uh, and anxiety genetic? Um, <coughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, I mean, research has shown that, that you know, there are some things that are genetically, pa genetically passed down, but for the most part, uh, the brain develops uh, in accordance with its surroundings and the interaction with its surroundings, it being with one's surroundings. So um, if you know anything of Gabor Mate, uh, I encourage you. And again, in our group, we've got links to, to some of his uh, talks and some of his work. But um, amazing story. Maybe you heard it already. But um, when he was an infant, um, gosh, uh, yeah, less than a year old, um, it was a couple of months old. Um, he, uh, his uh, mother was Hungarian, Hungarian Jews. Uh, and when the Nazis invaded, um, he, he was unwell and screaming all the time uh, as a child, as a baby. Uh, and his mother phoned the physician and said, you know, could you come and see Gabor? He, you know, he's crying. He's, you know, and the physician, the doctor said, uh, yes, of course I'll come. But just to let you know, all my, all the Jewish babies are crying. Uh, oh, such a powerful story. Uh, so um, we're we're wired to to relate to and sense and react to um, situations, the situations we're in, uh, and what that speaks to me, uh, uh, obviously, and to you, I'm sure, uh, is that you know we can sense stress, we we react to it, and and you know all the all the parent all the babies are picking up on the parent stress understandably horrible horrendous times uh and, and follow the link you know either ask me or or come into the group and find that link too because it's a, it's a short video but it's incredibly powerful and what it is saying is about how we uh how we learn and adapt and in fact how the brain is adapting and uh, it's not in that one but it's in other ones of his how the brain action and this is stuff he's discovered and it's incredibly powerful how the brain actually develops and different aspects of the brain, the different receptors uh, develop over others when uh, in cases of stress in the womb. So you can, as a mum, can influence the developing brain of your child in the womb by how you're dealing with stress. And guess what? How you deal with stress might be depicted and d defined and created by how you were brought up as a child uh, and that's why the question is, used to be so much about is it genetic is it passed on or do we pass it on unknowingly unwittingly by having created the patterns uh, and repeating the patterns and that's what I understand and what uh, Gabor talks about a lot um, and that's what I've been talking about in terms of self-esteem so repeating these patterns of life you know we can change them but it's in the brain that they're formed so uh, that's where we need to create the change. And we can, you can create change. You can kind of heal yourself. Um, but to know and understand what you're doing, why you react in certain ways is so important. That's got to be the starting point. So um, under stress, we develop different responses, for example, in stressful situations. We, the brain develops, uh, the receptors develop in different ways, uh, and we can create and it creates in us a, a response uh, that's easier to to understand as adults uh, when we become adults that, that we respond to stress for example in different ways maybe overactive in terms of uh, response or underactive response in terms of the way we deal with stress the way we're able to um, you know our, our ability to deal with stress our response to stress uh, and that goes back to can be traced back to childhood because of the way the brain develops and the receptors developed. Uh, now, if you find this interesting, obviously I can't do this justice in this short video, but I want you to kind of understand that this stuff goes on and the way you've learned and developed to res respond to stress, you pass that on. Uh, and it's in that video. It's a powerful video. Um, you pass that on unwittingly to your next generation. So this stuff almost becomes effectively genetic, but it's not genetic. It's not hardwired into the brain. 
we hardwire it into the brain with our actions, with the environment that we create. It's interesting stuff. So this has an impact, a massive impact in your life uh, in the way you deal with stress, for example. But this is relating to so many different aspects of life and uh, learning disabilities, uh, learning uh, so many conditions we have in kids that, uh, these days, you know, that are on the increase hugely. Um, we are passing it on and creating this uh, in such a big way. So if you don't want to pass you know, this stuff on to your kids, then you know it's not never too late, and you can um, you can change it and influence them in a really positive, strong way. You just need to understand what what your pattern is, what your programming is. So you can heal the hurt. Uh, Gabor calls it healing the hurt. Uh, you can heal the trauma, whatever. It, terminology you give it to give it uh, i call it the the mother of all beliefs you can alter that belief um, and learn to deal with stress in a very different way in a, an empowered way you just need to get the the right structure to find out how to do that you need to have the right understanding of what's going on um, and it's uh, you know, i say it's this mother of all beliefs it's what uh, will have formed as a belief uh, in, within yourself, uh, a belief in your ability to do something, your belief about yourself, your self-worth. So you can change that. Uh, and my invitation to you is to uh, take the test if you if you don't know whether you have this negative trait or not. It's a simple two-minute online confidential test. I don't get the results or anything like that. Um, if you have low self-esteem, it will show that you have this uh, negative belief about yourself, this low self-worth, and I'm sure you'll be able to, you know, easily illustrate, even when I'm talking, uh, that you, you'll know whether you or how you respond to stress, and you'll be able to implicitly trace that back um, to the situation, your environment when you were growing up, maybe that was implied uh, memory or actual memory. So, um, whether it's uh, something you can actually remember or because you were too young and the brain hadn't developed that hippocampus uh, side so you can't actually remember it yourself but you know you were in an environment of stress uh, and that could be you know, abuse, emotional abuse and maybe you don't understand that term and I don't patronise with that because I didn't when I first under, um, discovered it I didn't understand it there wasn't much stuff out there so there's tons of stuff to understand I don't need to uh, mean to uh, make you overwhelmed what I want to do is actually say look there's a group here come and find out about the group about all this stuff about um, how the brain develops and uh, Gabo Marte go and go and search him if you want to on your own you know come and ask questions and how this relates to self-esteem how this relates to your life how this relates to your patterns that you might be repeating and passing on to you negatively passing on to your children even though you're probably consciously trying not to do things uh, and that's a really difficult thing to understand that when you try not to do something you're actually doing it it's like <laughs> no i'm i'm really careful that i'm not ah then you are mm. and if you don't understand that come and ask me i want to uh, engage you in that conversation because it's a really important conversation to have because if you're not having that conversation uh, with yourself or somebody else or me uh, then you're just repeating the patterns um and uh, you know maybe you're not um, and maybe you don't have low self-esteem which is really cool i hope you don't uh, because it's it's quite hard work to get get through it um and there's a certain sequence that you need to go through but um you know if you do then i really want you to understand whether you do have it so you know take the test or maybe you've taken the test already but then do something with that you know don't just go oh, i know i know i do do something with it because you really can change this stuff. Um, but it's really difficult to see because it's it's hidden, hidden deep in your subconscious. Okay, how many was that? That was nine minutes. Uh, many thanks. Uh, love you to get in contact. Love you, love you to find out whether this stuff is you and dive into Gabor stuff. It's just fascinating. And it was a breath of fresh air when I, when I discovered him probably only a year ago, year and a half ago, because it was like, ah, oh, somebody's finally talking sense and he's done so much research research over the years and he says he says uh, so just a last little addendum amendum uh, a bit on the end uh, that um uh, you know he, the modern psychology uh, medicine uh, psychotherapy does not teach this stuff um and and yeah that's what i've been beating the drum for uh, and not in a negative way you know that all those resources are fantastic but they don't solve this problem that's why this stuff 
I, I call it it's a generational trap. You know, we're generation trap because we deal with the what we think are the issues, but there's a deeper one which is causing the issues, and that's the low self-esteem. So it's real big stuff. So do come and take the test if you haven't already. Um, if you know you've got this stuff going on in here, please keep the conversation going. Find out more because uh, it, it does hold you back in life unnecessarily, and you're going to repeat it unwittingly to the next generation. And I don't want that for them or for you. Uh, many thanks. Lots of love. Loves you, boy. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.